Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Now, are you interested in starting a cloud security career in 2025, but you're worried about whether you need to know coding or not? This is a very common question that I get asked for new from newcomers and even experienced people who want to move into cloud security. They are worried about coding, you know, because they get very scared when they hear coding. They say, I'm not a coder. I don't know how to code. And is this a mandatory skill or not? So in this video, I'm going to give you a very straightforward, no BS answer and show you like a balanced view of whether coding is required or not in cloud security. So let's get started. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tamur Ujlal. I'm a senior security consultant with Amazon Web Services. I've been in cloud for the past five or six years dedicated. And I my total experience in cybersecurity is around 20 years. And the whole point of this channel is to help people get into cybersecurity, understand cloud, understanding AI, and give them some good old fashioned, you know, career advice. So let's get started. So the million dollar question is, is coding needed or not in cloud security? This is the question which people are like worried about. And the simple straightforward answer is, is it a mandatory skill? No, absolutely not. I know many, many people who are working in the cloud and they don't know how to code. So it is not a mandatory skill. Like it's not like you cannot create a career in cloud security if you don't know how to code. I want to be very, very clear on this. I know many people who are earning very, very good salaries in cloud security without knowing how to write a single line of code. So just to get that out of the way, but to be balanced, it, the question, are you asking, is it needed? The answer to that is no. But if the question is, is coding like an advantage, a massive advantage in cloud security, if you know how to code, if, are, do you have an advantage? And the answer to that is absolutely 100% yes. And I'm going to give you the reasons also. So again, I want to be very clear. Coding is not a deal breaker. It's not going to like stop you from starting a career in cloud security. But if you know even a little bit how to code, you can write a simple program, write simple lines of code and understand it. That is going to be a massive advantage. Why is that? Well, let's go step by step. First of all, what is the cloud, right? When you talk about cloud, there are certain things which define the cloud. One of the first thing is cloud is identity and access management policies, IAM policies. If you're not familiar with this, these are basically JSON documents, you know, whether using Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, most of the cloud, the permission sets, the security is defined in IAM policies. The examples are giving, uh, the examples I am giving are mostly AWS based. Sorry, because I work in AWS. It's not like I'm biased, but it's just easier because it has the most footprint of out of all the cloud providers. But IAM, if you want to do anything about security in the cloud, be it you want to control what a user can do, you want to control what a server can do, you want to set down security policies, you want to enable multi-factor authentication, you want to put in advanced security models like zero trust, all of it is done within IAM policies. And if you cannot read a simple JSON document, you cannot create one, you cannot understand it, you're going to have problems. You can generate it through the console. I'm not saying you cannot do that. But a lot of times when you need to troubleshoot, when you need to create advanced policies, you need to roll up your sleeves in the cloud and get into IAM policies. You do not need to be a genius to understand it. You don't need to deep dive into like very, very complicated coding structures. No, but at least know how to read basic IAM documents, understand them. And this is where coding will give you a massive advantage. You know, like this is how it look like in the console. Like at least you should be able to understand. OK, what is this IAM policy doing? OK, it's allowing this base on what type of resource? What are the conditions where it is applicable? A lot of time your IAM policies won't work. You need to go down and debug it and you won't be able to debug it if you don't know even know how the basics of coding, right? So this is where uh, coding can give you a big advantage. IAM is the, like, think of IAM as the firewall in the cloud. Your firewall moves to the identity uh, level, right? And this is where you will be defining all of your controls, what a user can do, what a resource can do. Okay, the second one, very importantly, after IAM comes infrastructure as code. The cloud is built on infrastructure as code. There is absolutely no denying this. Nobody goes to the console and, you know, one by one, they start deploying. It's not like on-prem. Everything is codified within infrastructure as code in the cloud. And nobody goes, we call click ops, we call it, right? Nobody does that. And you should be able to at least have a basic understanding of infrastructure as code. Look at it, understand, okay, what is this template doing? Again, you don't you don't need to be like a hardcore expert, but at least being able to understand what is this code template doing? What are the things it's asking me to do that you should be able to do? And this is where infrastructure as code and knowing how to code a little bit will give you a massive advantage, right? You basically everything 
when you think about your infrastructure, you can write it in a template, it's just like any code you write, and then you can deploy it anywhere. And this is where infrastructure as code is a massive advantage. It's like a real game changer when you move to on-prem to the cloud. And a lot of on-prem also now use uh, codified templates from infrastructure as code. A lot of people tell me that uh, I'll just use, uh, you know, third-party solutions to generate it. You, you can do that, but unfortunately, what if some an error happens? What if you get challenged on these sort of things? You will not be able to understand. You will not be able to answer unless you know at least the basics of coding and the basics of infrastructure as code. So again, being very, very clear, there is no avoiding infrastructure as code in the cloud. And as a cloud security professional, you might be asked to explain it. You might be asked to review them. And third party solutions will only take you so far. If somebody challenges you, if somebody doesn't accept a finding, you need to be able to go down into the template level and explain it. And even going forward, you can put in security controls within the within these templates, right? But you can only do that if you know a little bit about how to code. Okay, what else? Well, cloud security is serverless, which is a lot of times when you put in security controls and you know you want to think about advancing your security posture. You want to think the play put in things like auto remediation, things which automatically fix like if a security violation happens and that is where serverless comes in serverless is a model in the cloud where there are no databases no servers nothing like the name applies it is just code which is being run so only code is being run and only code is there to secure so and this can be a game changer from security also so if you have like a server running in the cloud and there is a security violation you can call a serverless function like lambda it can do auto remediation and fix the server all automatically you do not have to do a single thing I have seen customers put in like advanced level of security automation, which can completely cut down their incident response times from like minutes and hours to seconds, all because of the power of serverless. And if you don't know how to do serverless, you will be at a disadvantage mm -hmm. because serverless lets you, like I said, auto remediate, put in advanced levels of security. And a lot of times you might be able to uh, ask to review serverless functions. Again, if you don't know coding, you will be at a disadvantage. Okay, mm -hmm. so what else? DevSecOps. Again, there is no avoiding DevOps and DevSecOps. We talked about infrastructure as code before, right? The whole cloud is run on pipelines. Even on-prem is now pretty much pipelines, but cloud especially, you will just have pipelines being run. All automatic codes, like you'll be committing code which is going through a pipeline. And this is where you will have to put in your security controls also, right? So again, if you don't know code, if you don't know even the basics of coding, you will have a lot of difficulty when trying to secure these pipelines. And I, this is like an example of an advanced pipeline on AWS. But I just want to show you this can, you can put in all sorts of controls, like security testing, uh, security scanning, DAS, SAS, all of those things. But if you are, if you don't know how to code, again, you will have a lot of disadvantage. Third party solutions can only take you so far. There is no avoiding that at one point in time, you will need to like, you know, roll up your sleeves and get into the DevOps pipelines, DevSecOps pipelines and implement these security controls. So this is where your coding will again bring you a massive, massive advantage. Okay, what else? Cloud is API. Uh, again, in the cloud, there are no like servers to protect, no physical servers, no physical data centers, all these services. And this is an example of AWS, but you know, like relational database services, Aurora, S3, Kinesis, Cloud Search, all of these are services which you call. How do you call them? Through API. The API is how you communicate with the cloud services. And a lot of times you might need to understand how these API calls are happening, what is coming, what is going, what is coming back forth. And you will have difficulty. This, this is like a standard API call from RDS. If you're not able to explain this or understand it, again, you'll have difficulties. So this is where a basic level of coding knowledge will help you. There is no avoiding API calls in the cloud again. So if this does not convince you, I want you to look at it in this way, okay? So imagine you have two cloud security analysts. They are being interviewed, right? The first analyst does not code. He has good knowledge of the cloud, but they rely on dashboards from third-party solutions, you know, and but they can't understand complex IAM policies and they need, this leads to extra time when investigating incidents. Analyst B knows basic coding. They can write scripts to audit permissions, you know, they can debug things when they crash or IAM policies, they can automate routine tasks to serverless, and they can even like deploy security fixes by infrastructure as code. They can take those security controls and bolt them into the infrastructure as code templates. Who do you think is going to get hired? Who do you think is going to get more preference, 
right? It's not like analyst is not a good candidate. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the other person is going to have an advantage, right? But now, uh, again, I, I, the point is not to like make you discourage if you don't know coding. The good news is Gen AI has changed the way we learn, right? Generative AI can be a massive, massive help here. It can be a massive learning assistant for you to learn coding. I mean, I have checked it myself. It is absolutely mind blowing. If you ask it to write a simple Terraform script in chat GPT, you know, it can write you a basic code. It, it'll be very insecure. It'll be very unoptimized. But here's the beautiful thing. You can actually ask it to explain to you, hey, what are the, explain this template to me line by line, like I'm a complete beginner. I have no idea what's happening. What are the security issues? And it'll actually do that step by step. It'll walk through the code. It'll explain it to you. Hey, these are the problems. This is how this code is written. And as you can see here, it'll even tell you what are the security issues. So uh, using generative AI, the world has changed, honestly, and especially when it comes to learning and coding, you'll still know, need to know a little bit of coding, but generative AI can cut down this journey massively. It can be your personalized learning assistant. Think of it as a person who's there to teach you coding. You can write simple code, debug it. And remember, you don't know, you don't learn coding by writing code. You learn code by debugging, right? And it can help you. It can be a massive, massive help. I've checked it myself. It is absolutely mind blowing just how, how much time it can cut down on when it comes to coding. So there really is no excuse if you want to at least have a basic knowledge in the cloud. So I hope this gave, showed you the pros and cons, and I hope I gave you a balanced approach. Uh, like I said, coding is not a mandatory skill, but it is a massive, massive advantage. So I hope this gave you a good idea. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Do like and subscribe to this channel.